back in December, I bought this Parkinol armchair on eBay for five pounds and I restored the wooden frame and then reupholstered it. It turned out pretty nice and we put it in the room that we use as our office. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. Anyway, we wanted a footstool to go with that chair and a couple of weeks after completing that project, we were at our local recycling center getting rid of some junk and they have a small resale store where they sell a few things that they deem too good to be thrown away. As you can imagine, being the scavenger that I am, I always like to have a look and see what they have to offer. And they had this old piano stool there for the price of virtually nothing. I can't remember exactly, but it was something like 50p or one pound. So I picked it up, paid for it and brought it home. It had been out in the rain, so you can see it's soaked through. So I left it out in the sun to dry off. That was about six months ago now and finally I had some time to get into the workshop and do some work on it. As you can see the finish is in pretty bad condition, there was a loose leg joint that would need to be sorted out too. And the hinges were loose and at this point I had no idea how much of an issue that would turn out to be. I figured the screws had probably just worked their way loose but it was a little bit more of a problem than that and I'll talk about that more later on. First I took the lid off. And here I noticed some cracks in the top of both of the legs on the hinged side of the stool. First I'd start working on the loose glue joints, so I got my mallet to disassemble it. And when I got it apart I found my first problem. One of the loose joints had been pinned with a nail through the leg and into the tenon on the apron rail and it was pinned on both sides, so I think this is probably original. I don't think it was a repair attempt or anything like that. These nails will have to come out and that means making a bit of a mess of the surrounding wood. So I used a chisel to give me better access to the head of the nail. Here I'm trying various tools to try and get it out and using a scraper to help lever it out and also to protect the wood. But that wasn't really working so I decided to try applying some heat to the nail and that loosened them up quite nicely so eventually I got them out. But this reminded me that I really do need to invest in some better quality pliers. Now I can get those loose legs apart and I label up the parts so that I can remember to put them back in the right place. Then I can start scraping away all of the old glue in these mortises using a chisel. This is so that the new glue that I apply later adheres to the wood rather than the old glue to form a stronger bond. For the cracks at the top of the legs, I wedged them open with a scraper and then worked some PVA glue into the opening and clamped it up. Here I'm using my carbide scraper to remove the old glue from the tenons. And then I can apply new glue and clamp everything back together. While waiting for that to dry, I could start working on the lid. I unscrewed this frame from the seat pad and then it pulled off and I could start stripping it. I'm not going to reuse any of this stuff because it's really old and probably not fire retardant. But I do want to use this chipboard on the bottom as a template to draw around onto a new piece of plywood that I had. I can use that as the seat pad base for the new lid. I used the track saw to cut that out. And then I can draw around that onto some 25 millimeter thick foam and cut that out at the bandsaw. Fortunately, I had some of this mustard velvet left over that I bought for the park and old chair. So I can use this on the stool so that they match. And I also had some wadding left over from a previous project that will help make the upholstery job look that little bit nicer and smoother. Here I'm laying out all of the pieces these fabric scissors have been great. I bought these when I worked on the park and old chair. Link to these and to many of the other tools that I use at the My Tools link in the description box below if you're interested. And then I start upholstering one long side using my air stapler. I 
I can then pull the opposite long side taut, but not too tight and secure that down too. And then I do the same process again to the shorter edges. And I like to leave the corners until last and this method always works best for me. So here I fold the corners in at a 45 degree angle, secure it down and then try and fold in whatever's left over and secure that down too. I'm not great at this upholstery stuff to be honest, but it turned out good enough for me. The wooden frame can then just be secured to the plywood to hide the upholstery, but before I do that, while I've got good access to it, I'm going to clean up the wood, and for that I use this stuff, some good quality 100 grit abrasive paper, a card scraper or cabinet scraper, and my two carbide scrapers. I do most of this work with the card scraper usually, and I've got a video all about how to prepare a card scraper for cutting. I'll link to that in the description box. Then I do a bit of sanding, and then I apply a coat of shellac, which is just going to help seal the wood and also pop the grain and make it look really nice. I drilled some pilot holes and then I could secure the frame in place again with the original screws. These brass hinges were really dirty and usually I'd use Brasso to clean them up but I didn't have any on hand so instead I reached for my green polishing compound which is what I normally use on a leather strop to hone the cutting edge of my chisels and plane irons. But if I rub some onto a cotton cloth I can use that to clean up the brass really nicely. Here you can see the after on the left and the before on the right. I wasn't trying to make these look perfect or brand new, I just wanted to clean them up a bit and restore the shine. At this point the frame of the stool was all glued up so I could start giving that the same treatment with the scraping and sanding. And what I found here was that the old finish on the legs cleaned off really easily because it was so worn and weathered. But when it came to the finish on the apron rails the finish was in much better condition and was a lot more stubborn to remove. So for that I reached for my carbide scrapers which will pretty much cut through anything. They're really useful tools to have for this kind of work and again there's links to these in the my tools link in the description box. By the way I'm not sure what type of wood this is, my guess would be possibly rosewood but I don't know. Please let me know what you think it is in the comments down below. As I was doing the rest of the scraping and sanding I came across something on the underside which I think might possibly be a maker's mark. It looks like the letter U has been punched into the wood. I always love finding things like that. So this is the part of the project that I really didn't feel too good about. I wanted to lower the height of the stool because it was designed for sitting on rather than resting feet. In a way it seemed like a real shame to do this but we really had no use for a piano stool. I used the track saw here, lining it up with my marks and making plunge cuts through the legs. And whenever I do this it usually results in having to spend some time carefully levelling the legs so that there's no wobble but not this time it was fine. I eased over the edges with some sandpaper just to help prevent the grain from tearing out if anyone drags this around the floor. I could use some of that wadding from earlier wrapped in a cotton cloth to apply the shellac. and I used a little artist's paintbrush to get into the hard to reach areas. Finally, I added a few coats of spray varnish for a nice durable finish and a little bit more of a sheen to the wood. In between coats, I sprayed on a little water and then denibbed using some 400 grit wet and dry paper before wiping away the slurry and recoating in a final coat of varnish. So I mentioned near the start of this video that I found an issue with the hinges and this is where I found out what the problem was. So a bit of an unexpected twist at the end of this project. Uh, the reason the screws were pulling out of the hinges before I started working on this is because as the lid opens the bottom of the door actually rubs on the top of these legs 
um, and that's why there's been too much stress on this back apron rail and I think that's why the splits appeared in the top of the legs too. So I've been thinking about this hinge issue and the first option I've come up with is to plane off four or five millimeters from the back of the rear legs. That would allow the hinges to open properly but then the legs are going to be thinner at the back than at the front and I just don't think that's going to look right. I could also plane off four or five millimeters from the front legs but again I don't really want to do that. A second option would be to add a piece of timber to pack out this apron rail so that it's a bit thicker and then recut the hinges and redrill the pilot holes. The problem with that is that the lid is then going to be placed further back about here and then there's no overhang at the front so you can see the end grain of the legs so I don't like that option either. The third option and this is probably going to sound like a bit of a cop out is simply to not use the stool for storage. We don't really need the additional storage space, we just want to use this as a footstool. So I think that's the best option um, and I'm going to try and find a non-permanent way of securing the top to the base. I'm probably going to use hot glue for that because that way I know I can always get it apart in future should I ever want to look at putting these hinges back in. If anyone has any suggestions as to what I could have done here to make the hinges work or perhaps even suggestions for different hinges that might give enough clearance to allow the lid to open, I'd be really keen to hear them because this is just the kind of silly little thing that will probably bug me and keep me awake at night. So that's that one done. I think it looks pretty good alongside the armchair and the wood matches pretty well too. Not perfectly, but I wasn't really aiming to make them look like they came out of the same factory. I think the fabric does enough to tie the two pieces of furniture together. This was a relatively quick project. It probably took about five or six hours in total, I think. Really happy I found it and glad it has a new lease of life, even though its original purpose as a piano stool is no longer applicable. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do that via PayPal or Patreon. Links in the description box below. On Patreon, you can also get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free plans and cut lists for my projects, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.